at Institut Teknologi 10 November, Surabaya. Our department became part of Faculty of Creative Design and Digital Business. Business Management ITS is a unique management major who combines management science with ITS identity as an engineering campus. Students will gain technical skills and soft skills to prepare themselves as future business leaders. There are four major concentrations in business management of ITS, which are Operation Management and Business Analytics, Marketing and Entrepreneurship, Human Resource Management, and also Accounting and Finance, to familiarize students with real business condition, our department offers some project-based courses such as design thinking, new venture creation, socialpreneurship, business consultant project, internship, and many others. Business Management ITS offers International Undergraduate Program or IUP for both Indonesian and foreign students. Students will get lectures fully in English and greater opportunities to take part in international exposure activities. Our department also offers double degree programs. These particular programs are held in collaboration with the University of Queensland and Rand School of Business. Students will study at ITS and partner universities to get two undergraduate degrees. We provide students the opportunities to take international mobility activities such as excursion studies, exchange programs, short course programs international internship and many others our department will warmly welcome foreign students to experience these international exposure opportunities to support those activities Business Management ITS have several international partners. There are two laboratories to promote researches at Business Management ITS, which are Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory and Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory. Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory, or the BAS Laboratory, focuses on Operation Management, Strategic Management, Finance, and Accounting. There are 10 lecturers and researchers associated with the BAS Laboratory. Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory have several assistants to support its day-to-day -day operations. Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory or the ESME Laboratory focuses on marketing, entrepreneurship, human resource management, performance measurement, and data envelope analysis. There are nine lecturers and researchers associated with the ESME laboratory. 
the Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory, also supported by several assistants to carry out the laboratory programs. Our department have more than 500 alumni. They work at different fields and industries such as national and multinational companies, government, or even became an entrepreneur. Let's join Business Management ITS and be the future business leader. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Shalom, om swastiastu, namo buddhaya, dan salam kebajikan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to the International Guest Lecture Series, bringing the topic for today's lecture, Cost and Management Accounting, with Dr. Johan uh, Tonic from the Fifth University of Applied Science, Belgium, on this beautiful Friday, November 6, 2020. My name is Joshua Sholar Monte from the Department of Business Management. We'll be the MC for today. SM. Thank you for joining our Zoom meeting this afternoon. Before we start our event today, please allow me to serve the protocols of video conference. First, please kindly adjust your name or ID screen S using the format. Your name underscore department or public once more your name underscore department or public second during the video conference we kindly ask all participants to turn off the audio and only turn on the audio when mc or moderator give the suggestion third we would like to recommend all participants to adjust the position comfortably and prevent the backlight effect fourth Please ensure your network has a stable internet connection for your convenience during the event. The last, we recommend all participants to use a handset or earphones for clear and better sound. In addition, we kindly ask all participants to fill the online attendance list through the link provided in the chat room. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we go into the main event, I would like to invite one of our lecturers, Ibu Nindi, to join us a little bit in agendas. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you today? Okay, thank you, Joshua. I'm fine. How about you? Please. I am fine, thank you. I invite you to leave this event, please. Time is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joshua, for the opportunity. Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, how are you? I hope you all fine. Uh, today, we are going to have a course, and the topic is investment analysis. And let me recall that one of the most strategic financial decision is investment decision. And I hope you all can get a new insight from this presentation. Uh, so before we start the main session, uh, let me introduce you to the, our speaker, Dr. Johan Tunik. He is a lecturer from FIFAS University of Applied Science, Belgium. And he has so many experience in financial budgeting. Uh, without any concern, uh, Dr. Johan, time is yours. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, good uh, morning for me and uh, good afternoon for you. Uh, Selamat siang. Uh, it's, uh, so um, today I'm going to, to introduce you to um, some topics uh, about investment analysis. If I'm talking too quickly or too loud or too, or there's something uh, not clear, please um, use the chat to, um, to reply so I can uh, check uh, if everything is okay for you. Uh, following this uh, session. I'm going to introduce myself uh, first. 
Um, my experience is uh, basically uh, in the waste management business. I worked for the company Suez Environment, uh, collecting and recycling uh, material worldwide. Um, they are now in a merger with uh, Veolia. It's another big company. Um, and I work there mainly as a controller. Uh, um, the link uh, between uh, finance and management. Uh, I started as assistant manager and, uh, and so on. I, there was a whole uh, merger. Um, during this 17 years, I worked there and uh, a lot of mergers and acquisitions. And as a business controller, I, I worked in several places uh, over the country and also in abroad. Um, and for the moment, uh, I'm working in uh, the Vives University uh, College in uh, Kortrijk, that's in Belgium. Um, that's the main job I do. And besides that, I do some consulting for other smaller um, and medium-sized companies. Concerning these topics, I'm uh, teaching at uh, the Vives University. And as you see there in the, um, on the picture, uh, during winter, we, do, we try to do some sports indoors, uh, cycling, and in summer, it's uh, uh, I'm trying to I'm do that. Uh, I'm, do, uh, I'm uh, cycling outside, uh, outdoor. Uh, now it's the first uh, nights that it's freezing. It's minus one degree uh, here in uh, Belgium. Okay, good. I'm doing. Um, I'm giving lectures at Fives University for about ten years now. Uh, a little bit more. Good, let's uh, start uh, uh, the capital budgeting uh, process, investment analysis in, um, in a company. But first, um, some um, introduction about what is management accounting. It's all about creating value in a company. And to create business value, you have to take the right decisions. Huh? You have to make a good planning. You have to direct well where you go, and you have to check if the direction, the strategy you've chosen, if that's the right way and if you are on track. Um, in planning, you can find uh, the topics uh, strategy, positioning with break-even analysis. When you start a business, that's uh, very important, these variable costs. Um, and we are going to talk about uh, the budgeting process we're going to talk about today about uh, capital budgets. The other topics, uh, once you have a good plan in your head and in your company, you can direct uh, how you are going to um, realize uh, the plan. And there is there are different topics in uh, management accounting, uh, cost principles, production uh, elements, and also analysis. Uh, which clients do we have uh, to take on? Uh, where do we make the biggest profit, which regions, which clients, uh, and so on. That's also uh, quite important. And controlling afterwards, um, uh, uh, do we get, uh, are we on track or not, uh, standard costs and um, also variance analysis, not only on cost side, but also on turnover side. Um, Within the waste business where I work, we did regularly price increases. Um, if we did a price increase afterwards, we have to check if the, the price increase was really successful or not. Now, certain clients, you say we go for a general price increase of 5%, but some clients or 3% or some clients don't agree, they, they discuss on it. So in you, you aim 5%, but you get perhaps uh, only three. Um, if the turnover in total after the price increase is increasing, um, then you have to check if it's due to the price increase or perhaps there is a volume effect. Uh, there is a price effect and there's also a mix effect that these elements you have to, to clear out when you do um, that's variance analysis. Uh, you have to clear out where does this um, turnover increase come from? Is it price, is it volume, or is it mix effect? Another mix of sales, okay? 
balance scorecard. Okay, um, what I do when I go to smaller companies, I try to to have um, on two papers, two or three, maximum three papers, the whole picture of a company. One is the PL profit and loss account. Uh, and two is uh, some important key performance indicators. And then you have a cash uh, extra, a cash uh, paper perhaps extra with the situation on pure uh, bank account and um, prediction of how, how this is uh, evolving, as how this evolution is. Uh, you can have more details afterwards, but uh, for the management, uh, three papers should be uh, the, the start, in fact. Good. Let's talk about capital budgeting. Um, I'll check if that's okay for you. Uh, my picture is from Zoom is away. Is that okay for you? You understand me well. Is I'll have to check the chat perhaps. I don't talk too quickly. Uh, let's have a look at the chat. I have to check. Everyone. You hear me clear and loud? Is that okay? I continue? I think we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Good. I'll uh, make this screen a little bit. Uh, smaller okay good so um capital budgeting is is very important because you yeah you put the money aside in the and you hope to get more money in the future so that's a very uncertain uh business decision huh? but it's quite important here it's uh, uh, an, an article in the newspaper uh, about the car industry um and declining sales uh okay you hear me again i i uh, i've seen on the screen that i was muted uh, yeah i'll um make a small recapitulation so the um, that's a very important on uh, in um Capital budgeting, you set, uh, you put money aside now to gain more money in the future, but it's a very uncertain decision. So it's um, it's very important to make a good analysis uh, before you invest money uh, in an uncertain future. Uh, but it's very important. Eh? You, you see here an article from a newspaper uh, in uh, Belgium about the car industry, uh, which uh, declining sales, um, electrification, autonomous uh, vehicles, uh, and so on. So where do these companies have to invest? And the margins are quite low in business, uh, in um, auto uh, and or car industry. So a lot of uh, challenges uh, in a lot of businesses now for COVID also. Uh, where do we, you have to invest as a company nowadays? Okay. What is capital budgeting? I think that's uh, something um, you all know uh, you're studying business and uh, it can um, yes, Johan, uh, have you shared your screen have nice didn't i share my screen oh uh, that's, we uh, cannot see your screen oh that's that's oh, that's uh, uh, very annoying let's have a look um, i thought you saw my screen can hear you clearly. Okay, let's. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very sorry. You had to re react uh, earlier. <laughs> Wait a little bit. Uh, oh, yes. This was with the. Did you, so you didn't see any of the the, the slides I I um I showed. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for that uh, misunderstanding. So you see it now. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, you can see. Thank you. Thank you. So 
So um, yes, sorry, but so you didn't see this um, slide uh, or this dia. Uh, creating business uh, value by a good management decision. It's about uh, planning, directing, and controlling. Uh, planning is about strategy, positioning, break-even analysis. It must be annoying if you haven't seen my, my uh, uh, presentation. Um, budgeting, um, that's also um, uh, important. I talked about it. Um, so, and directing, uh, choosing the right direction from the strategy. So, uh, the directing um, and analysis, uh, some elements in management accounting and controlling follow up. And that was what I, talking, I was talking about standard costs analysis and balance scorecard. Okay, good. Um, capital budgeting. Um, yes, it's uh, like I write here. Uh, um, yeah, the return will be extending more than one year. If the return is within one year, okay, perhaps it's not an investment then, uh, but um, mainly uh, the return will be uh, more than one year. It can deal, it can be about replacement investment. Uh, you change uh, uh, an active a machine in, with another machine, which is more productive. Um, you uh, increase production capacity, expansion, uh, rationalization. Uh, um, we had the sorting lines, for example, in uh, within the, uh, the waste, the waste business. Yes, uh, we had um, sorting lines, and we did a, an automation. Uh, we invested in an automation machine to 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 make the sorting more easy and more quick. Uh, and more clean, but we gained two two people on that line. And people, unfortunately, are quite expensive in Belgium. Uh, so uh, the payback was uh, was about uh, one and a half year. Uh, safety uh, that's also important. You may be aware on safety in a business context. Um, you have to be uh, sure that people coming to the work in the morning and they go home and at night or in the evening uh, that they still have um, every limb, every finger and so on. So also pay attention on safety in a business um, um, context. Um, environmental investments uh, on water, air purification and so on. Uh, climate change, uh, I think you also know um, that's a big issue. Uh, Europe is, is going to invest a lot in, in uh, uh, or making money um, available for um, the Green Deal, they call it here in uh, Europe. Good. It can um, be several uh, projects, uh, but um, it can also be about one project. Uh, uh, some terminology, capex, capital expenditures. Uh, that's what you see in international context when you look at the website Morningstar you'll find their CAPEX, uh, OPEX, uh, OPEX uh, operational expenditures. And that's the terminology. Um, good. It depends on uh, investment decision. Um, it's depending on the value creation. Uh, you have to have a certain profitability in your decision, in your um, investment uh, that you do. You want a, a certain... Uh, um, Profitability, of course, and there is a risk. Uh, does it fit with the strategy? That's also quite important. Strategy is very important in a company and in general uh, for a country and global, but for a company uh, specific also. Uh, financing, okay, um, less, uh, less important. It's uh, the, the calculation uh, doesn't take into account a lot of the, the financing possibilities. That's another um issue uh, in a company but um yeah, if it's a big project of course you have to deal uh, you have to take this in also into account uh, the, the main uh, in the main as aspects of uh, investment analysis is cash flow in a company or company wise uh, it's um and also the effects on working capital i will talk about it later on um yeah, required profitability and so on. Residu residual value at the end of the life cycle uh, of the product. Okay, so cash flow is important. 
let's have a look at this uh, type of investment. Uh, you have a yearly yearly earning of uh, 7,600. Lifetime of the machine is five years. You have, for this example, a company tax profit um, on uh, profits on of fifty percent. So, um, accounting wise, you have a profit after tax of two thousand. Uh, cash flow wise, uh, you add the depreciations again, two thousand plus uh, the three thousand six hundred, uh, because depreciations are not cash outs. So cash flow uh, is uh, 5,600. Um, about cash flow, there are a lot of misunderstanding. Cash flow doesn't mean that you have this amount of cash on your bank account. Uh, it just means that your company is able to generate so much cash. Uh, because if your earnings, if these clients don't pay, you don't have the money. So uh, the Cash uh, management, treasury management is very important also in a company. Okay. Relevant cash flows. Okay. Only take uh, the most relevant um, cash flows uh, for your decision. Um, yeah. Preparation time is uh, important. I give some advice at the company Daikin. It's a company um, constructing air codes, uh, heat pumps, and so on um their preparation time before they do an analysis is is quite uh, let's say uh, 80 percent of the time on, on preparation and the calculation is only 20 percent huh? um good some examples uh, of uh, um elements you have to take into account huh? um here uh, for uh, cash in uh, when you invest in a in a machine uh, or the profit is increasing you also have to take into account your increase in working capital uh, because if you do an investment then your um, yeah, your turnover will increase for example then uh, normally your inventory will increase your customer um, yeah, your creditors and your debit debtors will increase too so that will have effect on your working capital and on your cash flow. So that's uh, important to take into account when it's about a bigger investment. Uh, cash in can be increased volumes, uh, higher sales, uh, better prices, uh, reduction in working capital. If uh, I'm giving advice in a smaller company now, they're trying to reduce their uh, inventory because inventory, there is cash blocked in that inventory. Uh, so if you reduce the inventory amount, uh, you, you get cash uh, available, you get really money available to do other things. You pay back your loans or other things. Okay. Good. Um, subsidies or grants from authorities is also one important uh, aspect uh, that can uh, have an effect on your profitability of your investment. Okay. Um, only the relevant cash flows uh, are important in taking into account an, an investment. Um, so if you want to buy a new car for 20,000 euro, you can sell it your old car for 5,000. Uh, the amount for the investment analysis uh, can be is this uh, 15,000 euro. Uh, book value uh, in accounting, the book value will be uh, 20,000 and depreciated. So. Uh, for your investment analysis is this, this 15,000. Only actual and future cash flows are relevant. Um, so if um, you look at this uh, situation, you had uh, already some R&D costs for a prototype uh, over the past three years. It's about 250,000 euro. You want to start a production, another investment, uh, another expense is needed for 375,000. The question is uh, what amount do you have to consider uh, to produce this product? Is it 250, 625 or 375? Perhaps I can check the chat. You can answer on the chat perhaps uh, to see if um, um, what your idea is about this situation. What amount do you have to take into account for your investment here in this situation? 
So you do an investment for um, an extra 300 or uh, and 75,000. In the past, you did um, uh, already an R and D for uh, 250,000. Uh, which amounts do you have to take into account for your um, investment analysis? Can someone ask answer that question for me? The one who can answer will get additional score. <laughs> additional score already <laughs> for just one answer. There are no uh, wrong questions, uh, wrong answers uh, or stupid answers. Uh, just, um, and perhaps uh, you can say why you choose this or that amount. It's about relevant, relevant cash flow. Which cash flow do you take? Which which amount do you take into account? When well, you're going to to make an investment analysis later on and see some exercises. Yeah. Um, 250k plus plus the 375. Someone I don't know who answered to everyone. Okay, B Laras, I see here. Um, no, it's not, um, it's not the sum of these two. Huh? For your investment analysis, it's only the 375 you have to take into account because this R&D you've done in the past, it's a sunk cost. Whatever you decide, you cannot change this past costs here. This 250,000, 250K, you cannot change anymore. So you only have to take into account for your analysis in investment, you only have to take into account the 375,000. Okay, good. So that's important. Huh? So that's sunk cost. Perhaps you've already seen that. Uh, uh, this uh, terminology, sunk costs. Huh? Um, in decision-making, it's quite important huh? because the things you cannot change anymore uh, for the future, then in investment analysis, yeah, you can leave them and don't take them into account. Good, let's have a look at some uh, calculation techniques. Uh, the most known uh, calculation technique is uh, payback. I have to explain the principles of time value of money before I explain the net present value and the internal rate of return. Okay. Um, this is, um, um, I don't know if you have it in Indonesia, but uh, this is um, a picture um, and this truck here at the back is not driving in the reverse uh, direction. Uh, he's just loaded on another truck. They are driving in the, uh, in the right direction. Um, but is, uh, there, are, there are cameras here above the, um, uh, the, uh, above the highway. And um, the, the speed is controlled between one point and the other point. So um, they calculate an average speed. And if your average speed is higher than the normal speed that you can drive on that, uh, it's 90 miles, uh, 90 kilometer per hour there, um, you, get a, you get fined, okay? Sometimes it's about uh, 20, 30 kilometers uh, they measure the average speed. There were um, 50,000 drivers caught the first month they installed that speed limit control, 50,000. And the cost of the installation was about 1 million euro. Uh, the amount of fines of that first month uh, was 2.5 uh, million, okay? Uh, the question here is, uh, what is the payback time of this investment? Uh, also a small uh, calculation to make for you. So just calculate how many days it takes to get the money back. And if you do that, if you make this small calculation, you'll come up with the formula of uh, payback. So try to figure out um how many days it takes uh, to get the money back you do an investment of 1 million euro 
and you get after one month you get 2.5 million back so there are a lot of people listening so uh one of you can surely find the answer <clears throat> You can uh, write it on um, on the um, on the chat. And if you done if you do that, you'll come up with uh, the number of. Um, You'll find the number of uh, well, if you calculate it, you'll find the formula. If you you will have used the formula of payback. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. It's zero point uh, zero point four months. Uh, you divide indeed uh, um, your investment and uh, the payback formula is um, your. Let's right here. You take your investment. Uh, and you divide by your cash flows. Cash flow per uh, per year or per uh, period. Uh, per year or per period. So in this case, in this case, you uh, what someone un uh, answered here. You have one million. Uh, you have one million uh, divided by two point five million. Uh, to what's happening okay let's, let's do it like that uh, then you can see the formula uh, and you can multiply it in this case uh, let's say that there are 30 days uh, you end up indeed with 12 days and uh, multiplied by 30 uh, and days so in um, in this case uh, 2.5 uh, multiplied by uh, by 30 and uh, that's uh, 12 days so what have you done in fact you have uh, taken your investment and you divide it by your cash flow i see i typed uh, mistyped here a little uh, amount um, um so that's the formula of um payback huh? investment divided by the cash flow per year in this case uh, it's uh, in a month so that's uh, why it works uh, like that um in the case that you have an investment which has not equal cash flows each year uh, let's say you have year one uh one uh, and uh, you have two you have three and you have four and i have to put this a little bit down uh, here four let's say you do an investment of uh, minus a uh, thousand you have uh, 300 the first year of cash flow you have 400 the second year you have 150 the third year you have uh, 400 the, the sixth uh, the fourth year so you calculate until you have a positive um a positive uh, figure huh? so uh, i calculated it wrong here just a moment okay so um you end up positively in uh, it's a cumulative uh, cumulative you end up with a positive result in the fourth uh, during the fourth year so in this case and uh, the payback the payback is three years but you have to add uh, um yeah the the the, the comma uh, the within the it's three comma years uh, it's after uh, three and a little bit so uh, and how much is it is it well you have to take your amount you have still need uh, in the third year you, you you missed 150 and you have to divide it uh, by the amount you get in the fourth year uh, so it's uh, the total uh, is um, three point um, almost three point four years huh? It's a management decision. So, um, yeah, if it's 3.4 or 3.3, .3, 
it's about three years and that's uh, that's the most important thing also okay so payback formula i think uh, mm, that's um, um, clear i hope uh, or do you have any questions about this way of calculating or do we wait for all questions by the end till, uh, of the presentation i have to check timing okay um Okay. Is that uh, that okay for you, for everyone? It's an easy calculation. Uh, it's just the, the, the figures uh, behind the the comma. Okay, that's uh, the basic um, principle uh, of um, investment analysis. Uh, the basic formula, sorry, for uh, uh, payback. So, um, and the shorter, the, the better. Huh? Um, big advantage is easy. Huh? You just have, uh, it's also um, uh, referred to as a, a return on investment. Huh? And they can, they call about, uh, they, they call it uh, the return on investment. Uh, it's easy. You have a number of years, um, 100 investments and divide by the cash flow per year is two and a half years uh, or 3.3 um i'm going to show you an example of an investment in um in uh, solar panels so i'm going to give you uh, the solar panel data uh, if it's all right you have received all this information i'm going to go to the question so i hope you see this all on your screen um it's uh, the situation of um yeah some years ago huh? this uh, uh this situation it's about uh, eight or ten years ago even more uh prices of solar panels were quite high at that time um so you want to install solar panels to produce your own electricity uh, you have to take into account your future consumption because um, that's what they did uh, they asked not to install more than you need in belgium uh, that's uh, and um, you have this consumption you have an average consumption of 3.3 uh, kilowatt hour 3300 uh, kilowatt hour and this is the the uh, prices you asked from different suppliers you asked uh, for an installation of uh, 4000 watt peak that's the uh, maximum production uh, on average you'll get on the 3.3 in um, uh, 20 years um, total price including vat it's in a private situation it's not a business case it's just a private situation huh? because for your personal life investing in um in this type uh, in solar panels uh, or other investments you do later on in a house uh, perhaps a different more difficult to, to calculate the payback or a heat pump or, or another or air conditioning or and so on you can um, calculate um, these uh, payback periods so per in uh, belgium there was at the time now it's finished uh, uh, per thousand kilowatt hours electricity produced, you receive a certificate, a green power certificate. You received at that time at 320 uh, from an authority. Uh, once you've produced, you, re you register and you get the money. You get a grant from the mun municipality, uh, 500, and the government encouraged uh, the production of green energy through fiscal measures uh, on your tax. Uh, um annual tax sheet at the year uh, at the end of the year you got a 40 percent reduction of the investment of uh, the amount invested in 16,000, you got 40 percent reduction the first in total uh 40 percent uh, on this amount and uh you know, per year you could only deduct uh, maximum 3600 if you had more you have to, you know, it was postponed to the next year okay um, the cost of electricity in Belgium is about uh, 0.22 euro per, produce, per kilowatt hour, and that's the cost you have. So um, 
you can calculate uh, how much time it takes uh, to get your investment back. So this is uh, the Excel calculation. So this is your investment. Uh, um, this is the cost of the electricity. You get a certificate. Okay. So let's first look at the uh, the, the pluses uh, from this investment. Uh, you don't have to pay because you produce your electricity yourself. You don't have to pay your electricity. Uh, so you have an average consumption of 3,300 um, watt peak on a year basis. You multiply it by the cost of electricity. That's a saving. You don't have to pay it anymore. Uh, um, on the other hand, you receive, um, you receive a certificate. You receive a certificate and the average uh, certificate, that's uh, investment analysis, you will receive 3.3 certificates a year. 3.3, uh, .3. one year it will be three, another year it will be uh, four, but for investment analysis on average, you'll get 3.3 certificates a year. Okay, so um, these are the main and the most important elements you have to yeah, be able as uh, investment uh, um, making an investment analysis to find out in this uh, given situation wh what are the pluses and what are the minuses. Okay, so these two are the most important ones. Uh, the saving of cost you will not have and an, in an input um, um, a rev sort of revenue in the private um, private situation in a, as a part as a, a person not as a business so um, uh, these two together was an amount um, of uh, 1782 but you get a municipality municipality grant tax reduction uh, so taking all these into account all these effects uh, you get here a payback of 4.86 years. Uh, and we'll come up later on with the internal rate of return um, calculation. Um, without grants, because there are no grants anymore, there is a mass production of uh, solar panels. Uh, prices dropped a lot, uh, no grants anymore, no uh, certificates anymore. The situation actual uh, this day. I think for this amount of solar panels, um, I think it's almost um, uh, 6,000 euro now uh, for the moment. Uh, so the payback period, they say it's about uh, six years. So perhaps the price is all already uh, lower, uh, but um, without grants, without um, any certificate you receive actual uh, investment in solar panels payback period is about six years and a lot of people still uh, do invest nowadays in solar panels and you still have the same um, almost the same internal rate of return okay good this is uh, an, uh, an example of of um, of payback uh, calculating the payback you see uh, unequal and equal, this is equal cash flow and this is equal cash flow so if we do uh, we can calculate the investment in this case uh, let's take the investment of uh, 5000 uh, and we divide by a cash flow yearly of 792 uh, because you don't pay uh, for uh, the electricity uh, so that's like 6.3 years good is that okay for you yeah if there are any questions uh, you can wait till the end uh, uh, or you can ask them on the chat uh, now good there is a big disadvantage of uh, return on investment uh, on payback periods uh, because um, when you have to decide between these two projects uh, uh, project one, C, uh, that we do, you do an investment of 100, uh, project D also 100, but this, these are the cash flows. Which project do you prefer in this case? Can someone reply on, uh, on that? Is 
there someone who wants to Someone can uh, react on the chat. Which one, which project do you prefer? Your uh, managers in the future, you have to decide between project C and project D. Which one do you choose? Both are the same indeed in this situation, yes. Um, but there is one big, well, on payback, if you decide on payback analysis, you say, okay, both are the same and you choose, yeah, it's equal, but it's not equal. Uh, <laughs> there was one <laughs> element. Yeah, the microphone somewhere. <laughs> There is a microphone somewhere. Uh, I hear some noise, so please um, turn off. Um, well, in okay, good. Um, so, in, in indeed, for for uh, payback, it's the same, but you get your money much quicker in the project C. Yeah? So, in fact, on management basis, you, you should uh, take the decision to start with Project C because you get your money quicker back and you can do other things with the money you get back. Here you get 50K immediately in the in the, after the first year. Here you only get 20K. So the Project C is, in this case, better. Yeah. And that's... Um, um, that's because the principle of time uh, value of money is uh, very important and that the payback period is not taking to, uh, into account that element. Uh, the sooner the better, uh, the money you have earlier you can reinvest. Uh, um, and um, yeah, money can give us a return. That's the, the main uh, reason, of course. And because when you invest, you put it on a on a savings account. Uh, unfortunately, savings account doesn't uh, give you a lot of money nowadays, uh, but you can invest in, uh, in your own company or you can uh, take a share or um, uh, in another uh, company, okay, to invest. Uh, because the 100 euro you get today or the $100 you get today, uh, uh, what are they worth in the future? Uh, that's uh, compound interest, uh, but you have, yeah, we are talking about cash flows in the future, that's investing. Uh, what is that cash flow in the future, in one year, in two years, in three years, what is that worth? And uh, that's, that's quite important. Uh, um, future values counting back to the present, to the actual uh, time today is, uh, is called discounting, okay? If you remember one thing of this session, uh, hopefully it's this one. Huh? That's the miracle, and uh, they call the miracle of compound interest. It's also called the eight um, world wonders. Huh? Um, this is the situation. Perhaps I have to put it more, or to give it you to show it more visually. Um, I'll put uh, here on a paper. And besides. So this is the year, this is Sophie, uh, that's a person's name, and that's Eileen, that's Eileen. And they are uh, from year two and on, and they have, you have 20 years. And uh, Sophie says, I start saving money, uh, I have to add that interest rate uh, interest rate is five percent so each year you get five percent so that's the hypothesis uh, for this uh, example so sophie is doing this uh, for 20 years and 20 years on each year she's saving uh, 20 years she has um, just finished studies and she saves each year thousand euro 
Elin says, I'm not going to do that in the beginning. Uh, I have, I need my money to buy a car or to, to buy a house or other things. Um, and she says, I'm going to start my uh, savings at uh, after 10 years. So when I do that yeah, 10 years in a row, each year I save 2000 euro. So in the end, they also they both have uh, the same amount invested. Yeah. So they have both twenty thousand invested. But um, who of the two will get the most money? Taking into account uh, the five percent, who will have the most money at the end of the twenty years? Who can give who? Let's have an idea. Does it is it Sophie will which will have the most money, or is it Elin which will have the most money? And you have to, to to take into account that for each money you put aside or you invest, you get five percent. Which person will get the most money at the end of the twenty years? Elin says uh, Joshua. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, why do I have 20, 22? It's 20,000, I meant. So why is there? I'm afraid it's, it's 10 years. So I added, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Sophie will get the most, uh, indeed. Sophie will get the most money. Uh, I added, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I missed here. I, I did. Uh, I showed you um, uh, eleven years in, instead of uh, ten years. Uh, but um, Sophie will get the most, and it's quite. A, I'm. I'm not going to put the exact figures, but it's about uh, uh, thirty-five thousand euros. She will get uh, Sophie, and uh, this person, uh, Eline, will get about uh, twenty-seven thousand after twenty years. So this is the miracle of compound interest rate. Huh? So take it with you later on for your personal life, uh, because this amount uh, will get you after one year, you get uh, uh, 1.05, uh, you get 1,050. And then the second year uh, you get um, uh, a saving of, um, uh, of 1,000 again. And on this amount uh, you get on the 2,050, you don't have to do anything. You get 50 euro extra because you have an interest rate of uh, or you do an investment and you get 50 extra and on this 2050 you get uh, the interest of five percent so that's um, quite important so taking this into account uh, you have to know this um, principle uh, before we can talk about um, um, internal rate of return or uh, net present value okay Good, um, compound interest, that's what I explained. This is the formula. I'm not going to get uh, too much in detail, but 100,000 100, uh, you get at the end of five years uh, this amount. Um, okay, annuities, uh, okay, this is uh, calculated. I'm not going to get too much in detail about this. Discounting is the reverse formula. If you, this, of course, when your discount rate is higher uh, is um, you, you say there is an inflation there is a risk in the business i'm going to invest and the risk is quite high let's say nine percent uh, i'm doing an investment i get a future cash flow of hundred thousand uh, this hundred thousand how much is the worth of that amount uh, i'll get within five years it's only uh, sixty five thousand worth 65k this is the formula, one plus your interest rate and five years on. Okay. Um, this is an example you get. Um, there are um, uh, these figures um, are in tables. I can show you one uh, later on uh, for um, discounting 7% on two, two years. Uh, is uh, you have to multiply by 0 0.8734. Okay, uh, so 
and uh, this is the table uh, for one and the present value of one euro uh, discounted at seven percent uh, after two years it's 0 0.8735 so your one euro is uh, only after two years is only 0 0.87 worth uh, okay good um these are other formulas but i want to explain you what is uh, net present value so with the net present value the um, the explanation is the the, the word itself says uh, you need to come up with a value uh, net present value uh, um so you have to choose an interest rate you have to choose as a company when you you use the formula net present value you have to say i want a minimum acceptable um, rate of return hmm? um, you say okay when i invest money in my company i want a return of let's say 10 percent or five percent or 12 percent you say this is the minimum i want so what you're going to do is you're going to discount all these future cash flows at that rate of 12 or 10 percent you're going to add up all these discounted cash flows you are going to add up all the discounted cash flows with the initial investment you did if the amount is positive then you say okay i'm going to do this investment because the value is bigger uh, than zero so that means i have a return on my investment which is bigger than uh, the minimum rate i want uh, the minimum rate of return the result is a value like i already said okay i'm going to give examples that will make it more clear uh, for um, for you um, so in this case uh, we come back with the same example as i um, I showed you, uh, you invest uh, 80,000 euro. You say, I want a minimum investment profitability of 7%. Yeah. Okay, so you discount your future cash flows. Uh, in year two, you get 50,000. In year five, you get 50,000. You discount the amount uh, and you bring them to the actual value, uh, the present value. You add them up and you come up with 79,000. So you have a negative uh, net present value. It's minus 80,000 plus uh, the discounted cash flows. It's 79,000. So you get up, you get a total of negative uh, 680. This means if uh, your criterion is 7%, so you will not do the investment if you want a minimum. Uh, investment uh, you win, we want a minimum profitability of seven percent so that's um, uh, a type of analysis the seven percent um, i'm going to explain that later but that's you choose uh, this amount um, or this percentage mainly taking to in, into account the cost of your capital and the cost of your money in your you use in your company uh, that's the way at average cost of capital they call it okay what is internal rate of return uh, what is internal rate of return that is in fact the it gives you a, an, a rate uh, that's the difference between net present value and internal rate of return it gives you a, an, a rate and this rate is in fact the rate which equals the investment and the sum of all these discounted cash flows to a net present value of zero so if you add up your investment and all the discounted cash flows at the rate that the computer is calculating the net present value is zero so you end up with a percentage your computer is doing trial and error you, you have your um, i'm going to show you an excel uh, you have uh, your initial investment you have your future cash flows you put the excel formula in it and then you'll end up with a percentage uh, it's uh, also an, uh, an commonly used in businesses because it's, it gives you a good idea it's a percentage so that's um, 
um, like uh, payback it's uh, it's uh, clear you get uh, in so many years i have my investment back i give a, get a percentage of 10 percent 12 percent so that's commonly used in in businesses big disadvantage uh, um, that the gained cash flows are supposed to be reinvested at the same internal rate of return so that's a big disadvantage uh, i um, invested in solar panels at my own uh, home um, at that time i had an internal rate of return of 24 percent but it doesn't mean because I get some savings and I don't give money to the electricity company delivering the electricity and I get some certificates that the money I, I have, I can reinvest it at 24%. I don't do that. I'm not such a good uh, investor that I have return on the things I invest uh, of 24%. No, that's not true. That's... Uh, um, so this is um, this is important huh? that you uh, take that into account. I'm going to show you the proof of that. Let's have a look at um, the business con um, the um, investment analysis in a, in a business context. Huh? Um, I start with a very simple example, and I go on with more complex example at the end of the session. Um, and we have to take it into account the timing. Uh, okay, good. Let's have a look in a business context. Huh? So um, an, optician, an optician is uh, considering an investment in a machine to repair glasses. The investment is uh, 25,000 euro. Economic lifetime, five years. So you have to depreciate your investment. Um, there will be an increase in sales that are the pluses, uh, but there's also an increase in costs uh, that's the minus. Uh, wage costs will increase and electricity will in costs will increase. Average tax rate at uh, 30%, question, calculate payback, net present value and internal rate of return. I did it here for you. So there is uh, um, uh, the profit and loss account of a company, a very simple presentation. You get your sales each year, excuse me, uh, increase of cost of raw material, wages and so on, depreciation, so your so your earnings before interest and tax, so your result before tax and um, interest costs, if you have a loan, uh, earnings before interest and tax is uh, 2,000. You have to deduct. Uh, why do we have to deduct tax? Uh, well, if your result will increase as a company, you will pay more taxes. So in investment analysis, you have to take into account that tax effect. So you have your earnings before interest and tax, you deduct your tax uh, of uh, 30% and you have your net profit. Okay. As said, cash flow is the most important thing in um, investment analysis. So you have to calculate your cash flow, uh, which is in this case uh, 6,400 because you add up uh, your net profit, 1,400 plus your depreciations of 5,000. Because the depreciations, as you know, are not cash outs. You don't, yeah, it's, it's just an accounting principle uh, that you, you did an investment of, of um, 25,000, you pay the supplier 25,000. So that's on your bank account, that's on the balance. Uh, in your p and uh, you put only the depreciation of 5,000. So, um, and you spread it over time, but uh, it's not a cash out. Huh? The cash out was at, at the moment you pay the supplier. So you can um, calculate uh, the payback uh, by, for example, cumul accumulating the cash flows and see when you get positive. Uh, you, see, you see that you get positive in, in, uh, during, the fourth, during the fourth year. Uh, so it's 3.91 years. Uh, you can, um, perhaps I can, um, well, you decide, you divide uh, 5,000. I can show it on in Excel. Um, when I take uh, my uh, an Excel page, uh, new, for example. 
So the payback in this case is uh, 25,000 divided by your cash flow of 6,400. 6, so it's a 3.91. Um, net present value, uh, perhaps I can show you immediately the file I made for that. Uh, just a moment. Um, have a look where I put it there. Uh, yep. Okay. Let's have a look here. Okay. Good. Uh, clear my screen a little bit. Okay. So um, this is what I uh, showed you. The minus. Uh, uh, 25,000 uh, divided by your cash flow. Net present value. Net present value. So you see the formula in Excel. Uh, so um, you say, I discount all my future cash flows at a percentage of 10%. These are the future cash flows. I discount them and I add up uh, with my initial investment. So this is. Um, um, the net present value. You can also multiply your cash flows with the discount rate uh, with the 0 0.82 and so, and so on. Uh, the, um, the graph or the table I showed you, um, uh, these are the percentages here. Um, uh, this um, depreciation uh, this, um, of 10%, 10% after one year um, um, or two year, uh, one year here, the 0 0.9091, uh, and these are the amounts here. Oh, this is also a possibility to look, or you do it uh, with um, with uh, Excel. Uh, an internal rate of return, uh, you say, okay, look, the computer does it by itself, and ER, internal rate of return, and you, uh, you um, select uh, the initial investment and the cash flows uh, you have. Okay, so this is on um, company level, uh, the basic principle uh, to look at your um, profit and loss account, make a profit and loss account uh, and um, see where you come up uh, with and what is uh, the result of your um, analysis. Okay. Um, Yes, I'll have to show another example. I'll show you this. Uh, I'm going to prove uh, the fact that uh, your um, in that an in internal rate of return. The hypothesis is that you reinvest the amount, the cash flow you get, six thousand four hundred. You get again. Uh, the, um, you reinvested, the hypothesis is that you reinvested it at the 8.84%. So let's assume that you do an investment of 25,000, you put it on a bank account, uh, you get 8.84% um, interest rate. Uh, so this is um, what you have after one year. You deduct 6,400 as the cash flow, uh, and then you're you have at the end of year one uh, 20,809. You reinvest it again at the same percentage, and you have again uh, at the end of the second year, uh, you deduct 6,400. This is what left, and so on. So at the end, you come up with 9%. But as I said, it's not sure that the money you save, you will reinvest it in a business again at this uh, rate. So that's the, the hypothesis here. Okay. Um, here's some examples of, um, of net present value calculation, different types of investments and different uh, cash flows. And each time, uh, um, depending on how you look at uh, or which interest rate you use, uh, you have, uh, of course, uh, different, um, um, yeah, different, uh, so different um, outcomes. Huh? When you depreciate all your net present values at 10%, of course, your, your present values are lower 
when you depreciate the same amount of 200, let's look at it, uh, the 900, for example, uh, uh, cash flow in uh, you invest 1000 in year zero, you get uh, 900 in uh, year five, uh, discounted at 5%, that amount is 705 worth, uh, discounted at 10%, it's only the same amount, 900 is only uh, 558 worth, okay? Good. Um, let's have um, more uh, look at more um, details and more examples. Um, but just to um, to explain here um, the fact from uh, that the internal rate of return. The hypothesis is that that it's reinvested at the same amount. Uh, some companies work with the modified internal rate of return. Uh, modified internal rate of return. They reinvest. Uh, they say, okay, we are going to reinvest um, the savings we have at our cash, our, at our cost of capital. So the first year is the normal uh, return, and then all the other cash flows will be reinvested at their cost of capital. And that's the way they calculate. Uh, but that's, um, yeah, that's already a little bit more in, um, in detail. Good, let's have a look at some um, more um, examples and a, and a question. I'm going to, um, to ask you, uh, it's about um, a question about capital budgeting. So here you have, um, a question on capital budgeting. Normally, you have you received this uh, um, this question, and um, if you um, um, yeah, if you don't look immediately to the solution, uh, then you can make for yourself uh, this small exercise. Uh, so I'm going to explain uh, a little bit this um, situation. Uh, the company Thompson decides to replace an old machine with a new one uh, um, with the purchase. Uh, uh, there is an amount uh, price, an investment of uh, 46,000, uh, a little bit more. Installation cost of the new machine is 3,750. Yeah. Um, okay. The old machine can be sold for 5,000 uh, and still has a book value of 7,500. Uh, when it's sold uh, and so on, you get some uh, information about uh, that uh, situation. And the new machine will improve the quality and finish of the products, which is why the management expects an increase in turnover. Uh, so, um, the aim of investment analysis or the, the, the thing of investment analysis is not so, not so much the formulas, uh, you can find them in Excel, but in business, it's the most important thing is to find out and to look for these, these elements I'm, I, I'm writing down here. Uh, these elements are the most important things. As an accountant, as a business controller, as a business consultant, you have to get into the company itself to get more in detail and to get the information. Uh, someone is doing a proposition of an investment analysis well talk with the person who is proposing and try to figure out which savings are going to be realized or which extra costs uh, that's the most important thing of in fact of investment analysis um, so this company is uh, replacing a machine they are going um, to have um, an increase in turnover the current turnover amounts to 450,000 on an annual basis. And in the next uh, five years, uh, the um, management estimates the turnover <laughs> of this investment as follows. An increase in year one, 3%, year two, 5%, year three, and so on. So it's only the effect due to this investment it's 1% or the first year it's 3% on the amount of 450,000. Uh, um, in normal situations, I should let you um, uh, try to solve this, uh, this uh, question, but I'm going to, to give you the, the, the result of the, the calculation. But it's a lot of students 
um, take the total amount of the 450,000 plus the 3%. But that, that in this case, it was only, um, um, you can only take the effects of the investment when you make an investment analysis. And the effects of the investment is only 3% on the 450,000. That's um, um, where some students um, miss in, uh, when I give this exercise. Cost savings you have. Uh, um, okay, labor, maintenance costs, and so on. Uh, um, straight line depreciation of your machine uh, at price plus installation costs. So you invest, in fact, 50,000. When you add these two up, you get uh, 50,000 investment. Um, tax rate is, um, was in Belgium at 34%. But it's now at twenty nine percent. So we have to um, draft a short income statement uh, and calculate cash flow, free cash flow, and accumulated free cash flow, and to know uh, payback on uh, that investment. So I'm going to show you um, an, uh, a possible solution. I'm not going to say that this is the solution, uh, but. Uh, um, so in this case. Um, we have a sales a normal turnover of 450,000. We have 3% on that amount is um, uh, the 300 is the 13,500. And the next year it's on 5%, it's cumulative uh, on the amount you have gained uh, the first year, clients stay in the company and you get 5% extra uh, on above on the uh, year before. So um, in investment analysis, loss of sale on the old machine, uh, because you um, the book value of the machine was uh, higher than the selling price of the machine. So you make a loss on the, sell, on the sale of the old machine. Uh, you save some uh, personal costs, you save maintenance costs, you save other costs, uh, and you have a depreciation. So you have again the same order and PNL as I showed in the presentation: earnings before interest and tax, corporate tax rate, net profit uh, dif differs each year. Sorry, this is uh, okay. So um, the tax rate um, you deduct, and then you calculate the cash flow. Uh, free cash flow is um, probably you already heard about that and the free cash flow is in fact uh, in this case equals um, um, from year two on is the same as the cash flow in fact here in this case i should put the minus thirty two thousand. that's the free cash flow the first year because you pay the supplier at the uh, year one so the free cash flow is in fact minus 32,000. I put this 17,000 there and you just for Excel calculation. So the free cash flow is in fact uh, your cash flow minus your investment. So free cash flow, uh, free cash flow is in fact um, cash flow minus in, in, glo in global minus investments. That's uh, free cash flow. In this case, uh, it's you do an investment on year three of um, five thousand. Your cash flow is twenty thousand, so you deduct these two. These two. So payback period. In this case, it's like I explained. Uh, the two years you get positive. In the third year, uh, divide minus. You have um, you lack four thousand four hundred seventy one uh, divide by fifteen thousand. Uh, internal rate of return on free cash flow in this case, and because you do extra investments um, and uh, work um, uh, the, um, yeah, at the weighted average cost of capital when you discount every future cash flow at 15%. Uh, so this means, in fact, that your investment uh, um, has return which is more than 15%. 
because you this did, did, did you you discounted all these future cash flows at 15 percent you come up you add up with your initial investment you add up with a positive figure this means that your investment is has return which is more than 15 percent and indeed it has an internal rate of return of 27 percent okay um in investment analysis you you have to look at the worst case but also the best case uh, perhaps is the best case solution two uh, when you look at solution two the hypothesis is here that um, uh, the gained growth in the first year is added up with the growth in the second year uh, so this is the, the very positive situation mm. and depending on uh, how you look um, how the business uh, is going and how how good uh, how yeah how realistic is this outcome uh, that's the question here okay um let's check the timing perhaps uh, until when do i have because i still have to explain some elements um i think you still have time maybe about 10 minutes 10 minutes okay let's have a look then um on um let's have a look at uh, a more elaborate uh, example of investment uh, analysis uh, and um, i showed you that i gave it in words i think uh, look at it okay so um when you're doing investment analysis for a, a company uh, you have and if for example it's um you have to do a lot of investments uh, um, within Suez. There were um, regularly some uh, some investments in, in containers. In uh, um, I'm going to show you an example. We also did some takeovers. Uh, we we wanted to to um, well to um, take over another company. We merged with other companies, so we had to make an analysis which is based also on these uh, principles. So, um, for example, in some companies, you have a standard tool uh, for investment analysis. You can think about all the cost savings you have, uh, uh, savings in headcount, savings in IT, cost avoidance, other savings, sales increases, um, your capital expenses, capital expend um, expenditures. Um, the yeah, capitalization of own activities. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, make an own construction to 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 dig a hole or to put uh, some concrete uh, um, yeah, to do some ad adaptations on your production and you have to uh, get some people free to do that uh, then you can capitalize and re and, and, and depreciate uh, these uh, elements also um, then operational costs costs linked with the, the normal business that of, of the activity, in this case, from that uh, investment, uh, the profitability, and then the working capital. That's a, a quite important one also, uh, because when you uh, have more turnover or less cost profit, um, let's say more turnover, um, more suppliers, then you have more and more clients, uh, you have more accounts payable, more accounts receivable, and more inventory of raw material and finished goods. So these elements also play a role in investment analysis and will have a negative, a negative effect on your uh, profitability. Okay. So here you see um, um, a summary, uh, for example, a production uh, project description. Uh, who is the project uh, leader? Uh, the name of the project. Uh, does it fit in the st strategy? Um, if you make something like, uh, if you make an analysis in a company uh, or for your, or your study or um, later on, um, investment analysis make it flexible, make some variables uh, when you change things here that um, the elements in your analysis are changed too. Okay. Um, so the terminology is a little bit. Um, the same, uh, but uh, 
the order uh, is a little bit different. Uh, so you have total benefits, uh, your OPEX, uh, your operational expenditures. Um, if you don't have depreciations yet in your PNL, you haven't deducted them yet. Uh, then we talk about operational cash flow. I call it operational cash flow. Um, um, operational business result, it's also called uh, the earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization. Uh, because depreciations are deducted lower. Uh, so it's an earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization. That's an important one. I, I focus on that one uh, because uh, we don't take into account interest. Uh, is that a company financed a lot of debt or more uh, equity? Um, the way they depreciate their material, a quick depreciation or a regular depreciation, uh, linear depreciation, um, amortizations, okay, uh, and the tax rate. Uh, um, the, in, the tax on, on a different, uh, yeah, in Indonesia, the tax rate for companies is different than in Belgium. When you want to compare companies in Indonesia and Belgium, then EBDA is the most uh, uh, ideal factor to, comp to compare the operational activity of a company. It's operational uh, because exceptionals are um, not included in that um, element. Uh, after deducting depreciations, you have EBIT, uh, earnings before interest and tax, tax effects, net result. Um, then, um, yeah, the amount of capex, the working capital effects, uh, free cash flow, discount rate here, um, and then uh, the, the calculations uh, here at the end. Huh? I'll show you an example in Excel, and I send it also to you. And that's the investment model for company evaluation I used. Um, and um, when we did uh, mergers and acquisitions, uh, we looked at, uh, that was the end result. Of course, there is a big detail, um, a big detail um, um, behind uh, a lot of sheets to come up with the uh, revenue uh for a company you want to take over uh, to, to calculate the cost of sales and uh, a lot of uh, um calculations behind uh, to come up with that um, that situation um so in this case uh, you see the same more or less the same layout coming back uh, it's the revenue it's the cost of sales gross margin uh, gross profit overhead costs uh, so that's our all um people supporting uh, the business and then you have here overhead costs uh, linked with the business uh, more um ebda uh, amortizations ebit uh, return on sales tax effect the same net result is called here net operating result after taxes uh, the amortizations uh, capex uh, working capital effect and then you see the principles here of um uh, discounting future cash flows is the same. Uh, so you have your free cash flows and they are um, discounted at a certain rate. Uh, you, you, in this case, uh, we calculate the discount rate of 10% and um, growth rate of um, at the end, you have a terminal value of a company um after a certain period there is still the company is not is, is not worth nothing <laughs> there is still has a value after 10 years and then that value is also calculated in uh, the um, discounted cash flow model but this the, the same principles on inv as investment analysis are um are um are important here okay so um this is um uh, a global overview of what investment analysis is um, is about. I'm going to look if I can show you a last uh, example um, that I then I have to change and to look for uh, another example. Um, just a moment. I'm going to 
uh, this quick look at um, if I still have the time, I'll show you another example of investment analysis, uh, if that's okay. Do I still have the time to show you another example? Okay, you can show it. I think okay. you still have time. Okay, so I'm going to check. Okay. Um, Let's have a look. Um, I'll show you immediately. Just a moment there. Okay, this is it. Okay, this is... Um, yeah, information about a smaller company I'll give advice to. Uh, so don't share it or don't uh, to others. Okay. But I also want to show you the layout uh, where I work with when I um, and, uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, sort of PNL. Um, I look um, I look at and the, the format is, is important. Okay. Good, this was a basic investment for um, uh, digital production of wallpaper. So um, the company wanted to, to look um, yeah, for this type of investment. It's a couple of years ago. So I looked with uh, the supplier, okay, what is the cost of that um, investment? Um, yeah, you cannot read it because it's not in, in English, but this is the basic investment. It's um, I had to some uh, adaptations to the production room. Uh, so we have here uh, um, extra investment uh, uh, to do. Depreciations, this, these are the depreciations. Here are some basics about um, the productivity, uh, number of working days, um, um, year cost of an operator, uh, um, some the basic costs of uh, one um, yeah one roll of um, of wallpaper. Uh, then I took the um, the offer of the supplier, all the information. Then I put hypothesis one, hypothesis two. Uh, the scenarios um, worser and worser, in fact. Uh, um some production uh, uh, elements uh, if um about um um yeah the how quick uh, the printing was going and then you see here uh, the information of the uh, business itself uh, the variable costs so um splitting in management accounting splitting your costs in variable and fixed costs is in fact the most important advice i can give you uh, try to do that don't use the uh, legal um, way of presenting your figures in you um, in management accounting use your own internally uh, presented um, uh, p l or profit and loss account so Pay attention and divide your costs in variable and fixed costs. That's the one big advice I can give you. So here are all the variable costs uh, uh, we put uh, uh, and yeah, um, uh, we gathered all together. And then we have the fixed, the fixed costs and the fixed uh, production costs. Then uh, some hypotheses about um, uh, profit. Um, so you see the the layout coming back and so you have your your turnover you have the variable costs and then profit uh, turnover minus variable costs gives a, um, a gross margin this is the gross margin uh, also look learn to look at percentages percentage wise what is the percentage of um, my gross margin towards my turnover uh, for 100 euro here, on the 100 euro turnover, 
we get a gross margin on, of 50, 51%. Uh, the aim in a business is to get this margin uh, each month um, at the same level. If your turnover due to COVID crisis or something else happening, uh, this is decreasing, then uh, hopefully your variable costs, your variable costs will decrease too, uh, so that your gross margin will remain stable, hopefully. If not, uh, perhaps not all costs are variable then, uh, but the fixed costs are fixed. You cannot change that on, on a very short term. Uh, so you have to, to be able to, to cover these fixed costs. Otherwise, you, get, uh, you go bankrupt. Huh? So when I split, when I go and I advise, I advise companies, I split the, the fixed costs and fixed operational costs. It has to deal with the business itself and um, the overhead costs, the supporting costs. And then you get an operational result and you can calculate an uh, operational cash flow and even a break-even uh, situation. And when you take all fixed costs and you divide, you divide them by your, uh, the 51% of the gross margin, uh, for each 100 euro, you get 51 euro uh, gross margin uh, or 51%. Uh, uh, so you divide uh, your um, uh, fixed costs by 51%. So that's the break-even uh, um, turnover you get here. Okay. Good. So this is um, um, about the, um, the thing I wanted to share with, uh, with you. I'm going to check if um, I uh, wanted to... to you know, I can talk about um, um, about the way at average cost of capital. Uh, that's uh, uh, you can look at this video. I'm not going to show it, uh, but uh, um, it's in fact the cost of your own equity. Perhaps you pay dividends, uh, um, and you have your costs of your. Um, 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 yeah, your cost of your um, your debtors. Uh, you have some uh, debts with uh, banks or other uh, people. Um, there is an interest rate linked to that debt. So these combined with the risk, uh, um, you get a weighted average cost of capital, which is important in, in investment analysis. Uh, because if the cost of your capital is... Um, is uh, higher than the return on your investment, and you don't have to do it. Huh? Um, okay. Um, I never calculated the weighted average cost of capital myself. Huh? I was a controller. I got the information from the financial departments uh, at the shared services. I also worked at shared, ser shared services, but uh, there was um, a finance uh, person, especially uh, dedicated to. Um, to pure the pure cash uh, management. Uh, so, work okay. You can look at the video, um, but it's important in valuation. And the higher uh, the discount rate, uh, the lower the value. Uh, you cannot see it perhaps very well, but this is uh, the uh, Facebook going to the stock exchange, uh, and they were valued. Uh, uh, depending on uh, which WAC you use, 5% uh, um, you get 168 uh, mil, uh, billion. When you do, when you use 15%, uh, you get only 40 uh, billion. Uh, they went to the stock exchange, I think, about at, at about 100 uh, billion um, uh, year. Um, okay. Good. Um, so. The main issue on investment analysis is 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 not uh, the 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 calculation of this itself, but it's gathering all your information in that business, talking with the people who propose who propose the the investment. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, looking for sales volumes, for sales prices, for costs changing due to that investment. Uh, it's looking at initial cash outs, uh, taking into account life expectations and the end end life. What is the value at the end of the life um, of that um, um, that product? Huh? Um, make some scenarios, uh, some um, best case, worst cases, uh, 
And if in the worst case it's still positive, well, go for it and do it. And uh, um, yeah, and um, yeah, take into account uh, working capital. That's also uh, an important one, um, if necessary. Yeah. Um, this is um, a very important element in uh, investment. Um, uh, or in businesses, I would I would say uh, uh, investment analysis because it will give future cash flows, and if you predict it wrong, then you have a problem. Uh, um, I have uh, yeah, I've seen the situation. Uh, I was in the company at that moment. Uh, we did an investment as uh, a group in. Um, uh, there was a whole um, production facility installed for splitting. You have the blisters of medi medical, um, medical, uh, yeah, or, or, or drugs, uh, um, prescriptions from uh, the pharmacy. Um, when you get the pills, you um, you have metal and plastic linked together. Yeah? Uh, the investment was. Well, the, the the facility production facility was to uh, to split to collect all these uh, blisters and to split the metal from the plastic. But the supply, the, the, the we had not enough volume. Uh, there was a competition from in the northern countries in Sweden uh, somewhere, so that was a, f a disaster. You know? The person who decided that to do that investment got fired uh, due to misinvestment, and you have to yeah, take a loss. Then, if you do an investment uh, and you have uh, you did the wrong investment, uh, you have to depreciate it and exceptionally, or to sell it at a lower price. Uh, so, and that's a negative effect on your result and on your equity. And in the worst case, you have to increase capital if your equity is uh, going too low uh, or, um, yeah, or sell other assets huh, to increase uh, uh, or to make your balance uh, ratios uh, more uh, looking more uh, or looking better. Okay. Good. Um, so, uh, for your attention. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if there are any questions, I'd um, be pleased to, um, to try to answer your questions. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Johan, for a wonderful explanation and also give us so many examples, the implementation of investment analysis. Okay. Uh, now, student, you can ask a question to Dr. Juhan. Uh, you can raise your hand or write on the chat box. Yes, I'll put my uh, screen a little bit. I, um, and, uh, okay, no. Okay, okay anyone? Oops. Have a look. Anyone who want to ask? Okay, maybe it seems like uh, every student uh, looking for okay. the question. Uh, Dr. Johan, uh, maybe uh, uh, you can explain more why money has time value, or maybe you can give us some more example of why money has time value. Um, sorry, is that a question for me or? A... Uh, sorry, Dr. Johan? Yes. Yeah, uh, I think you can explain to us uh, why money is some why money has time value and give us some more example related to it? Um, I, I don't understand the question exactly. Uh, uh, do you want me to give more examples on investment or? Uh... Yeah, 
uh, and the reason why uh, money has time value. Um. Uh, maybe the voice. Can you can you write or, or yeah? I will write it on the chat box. Uh, do you yeah. understand what I mean? Wait, I'm going to look because the chat. Uh, 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 why money has time value and also give us an example, some example. Ah, okay. Um, um, yeah, how can I explain um, the time value of money? Um, is that not uh, clear? So if if I uh, have uh, money now, uh, yeah, uh, coffee is good. Huh? Yeah, sorry. Um, um, yeah, if you um, if you have. Um, yeah, if you want, if I give you a hundred euro now, or I give you a hundred euro within one year, I think it's logic. I hope to understand that it's better. I'll give you now the hundred euro than within one year, because within one year, prices, for example, of bread or meal or other things will have increased. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So. With the 100 euro I give you now, you can do these things. You can buy um, um, yeah, uh, um, more. You can buy more with 100 euro now than the 100 euro I I um, I give within one year. Because within one year, with that 100 euro, you can do less because prices will have increased of a lot of products eh, of uh, gasoline or um, or bread or uh, there's always um, well some prices decrease eh, but in general uh, there is an increase of prices so with 100 euro with, i give you within one year you can do less so that's in fact uh, uh, the principle of time value and with the money you i give you now at 100 euro you can invest in a company uh, like Tencent, for example, and hopefully they have return uh, on equity, which is higher, or they give you a return, uh, which is higher than uh, what you get um, on a bank account. Or you can invest it in your own company uh, and do, uh, do something with it. Okay. Thank you for the explanation, Dr. Johan. Okay, student, maybe you have some question to Dr. Johan? Was it all clear or? Uh... All clear. There must be some question. I cannot believe that everything was so, so clear. <laughs> so, uh, so uh... <laughs> anyone? Is it something? you have already seen in classes or? Um... Yeah, uh, there is one. Alif, uh, do you want to ask to Dr. Johan? Uh, maybe you can ask directly to Dr. Johan, Alif. Yeah. Alif is coming live. Alif, you. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Johan. Good afternoon. 
uh, I want to ask you about investing. Uh, yes. What is the point that we have to see what, when we want to do investment? What are uh, the things? Thank you. Okay. And you, the, your question is, if I understand well, what is the point you have to look at when you do an investment? Uh, what are the points of the of a company that you want to invest? What are the points of that company financially? Uh, okay, then you. It's not more. Uh, it's it's more an investment. Uh, it's more uh, investing in a in a company. You mean not in an uh, yeah not not an investment in the company itself, but uh, you want to buy a share. That's uh, that's what you want to ask for. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of factors uh, when looking at companies. Uh, there is re one of the the interesting things to look at is the return on equity. Uh, if you have um, your return on equity. Um, if if a company has return on on equity, for example, of ten percent or fifteen percent, then it's um, it gives an idea that it's a good uh, profitable company, and because it's the net profit divided by the equity, their own capital and their profits they gained uh, in the in um, in the past. Uh, because the profit you gain is added up with your equity. So if um, you get a net, net profit, a return on equity is a good um, parameter. Um, the debt, not too much debt, because debt you have to pay back. Uh, if a company has a lot of debt, uh, yeah, if all these uh, debtors say we want our money back now, that's a dangerous uh, situation. So the, the solvency, you already heard of solvency? Uh, yes, yes, I The solvency is also an important one. Um, working capital, uh, the, how much working capital does a company need? Um, yeah, there are so many parameters to, to look at, uh, but um, the um, one important factor is, is if they are able to, to generate cash, and that's the EBDA, uh, uh, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, as I explained, uh, because um, it's better to have a company with a good EBDA percentage-wise to the turnover, uh, EBDA um, than a company which has um, yeah, um, uh, no or, or less less profit. Profitability is, is, is important and EBDA is a factor and they you can compare EBDA with the debt for example. Yeah. But um, I can show you I can show you uh, one thing on the internet. Um, um, when I go to Morningstar, uh, on this site, uh, you, um, you can look at, um, at a quote, um, which um, company do you want to see? Is there a specific company you want to, to see? Some figures of? Maybe iPhone. iPhone, uh, Apple, Apple, Apple. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we look at Apple. Um, so here you have, um, but it's very difficult. Eh? It's, it's uh, to, to, to give you one, one uh, parameter. It's uh, um, you have here the financials normally. Uh, let's have a look. Um, um, this also gives you an idea, price book value. Uh, so the book value is, is normally your equity. 
and you divide by all the shares available and you pay 30 or 31 times uh, the book value. Huh? Um, um, operating performance, let's have a look. Uh, so here you have return on equity. Uh, we talked about return on equity, for example, and the evolution. Uh, it's uh, always increasing, you see here at Apple. They are at return on equity of uh, yeah, a high 30, 73% return on assets. That's on total assets, uh, return on invested capital. Okay, gross margins, you see. Um, let's close this. Um, you see also here some interesting uh, parameters on um, working capital. Uh, um, so here, day sales outstanding, they have to wait uh, 26 days for their money from the clients. They have an inventory, a very low inventory, and they uh, pay their suppliers late. So in fact, they, they play with the money of the suppliers. That's a very good example here. Uh, they have uh, a very good working capital here, and it's uh, 25 add up uh, let's say 26 and uh, 9 um, it's 35 they have 60 days they play they have two months they play with the money of the suppliers they wait to pay them and they they have the money available they, they can do other things with it yeah a lot of a lot of parameters um, uh, normally you also have um, the debt uh, evaluation. Um, enterprise value, EBDA, yeah. How many times EBDA? Uh, okay. But uh, it goes too far to explain <laughs> all uh, all details. But uh, yeah, yeah. I have to, to look at, um, yeah, that's another course about investment analysis in, in stocks and uh, other elements. Okay. Does that uh, give you some ID? Uh, thank you, sir, for your explanation. Yes, thank you. No problem. There is someone else who wanted to ask a question here? Uh, Joshua. Joshua? Yeah. You can ask directly to Dr. Johan. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity and insight. So I have a question. Uh, we have talked a lot about the technical analysis of investment, but uh, the many invest many success investors they are focused on the fundamental analysis, such as the Warren Buffett or Indonesian is there is like Lok and Hong. So, what's your opinion about that, and which one is priority? Thank you. Um. Yeah, sorry. I didn't. Was that a question for me? I didn't understand exactly. Sorry, the last. Uh, you talked a lot. I, I heard Warren Buffett and, and a lot of uh, technical analysis. Yeah. So oh, we have talked a lot about the technical analysis of investment, but uh, many success investor uh, they are focused on the fundamental analysis, such as the Warren Buffett or Indonesian. There is the Lokang Hong, and they prove uh, there is the work like. There is, to pro, uh, there is work, yes. Uh, so what's your opinion about the about that and which one is priority? And the priority between what? You have fundamental analysis, what I showed, and you have technical analysis. And that's um, that's indeed, uh, and yeah, I, sorry, but I didn't understand exactly the question. Which one is the most important one or? Uh, uh, yes, uh, which one is the priority? Uh, technical analysis or fundamental analysis? Yeah. Um, I think even in Belgium and in banks, 95% uh, is focusing on, on uh, fundamental analysis. And only 5% of the, um, the, the people working in banks and, and following stocks are working with, um, with technical uh, or specialized in technical analysis. But uh, it's it's a combination. I mean, they always make a combination. But the, the most analysis analysts analysts are um, fundamental analysts, and they they link it 
they check with the, the technical. No? Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Is that, sir. Uh, a good, uh, is that an answer on your question? Uh, yes, there, uh, thank you for the answer. Okay, thank you. Terima kasih. Okay, uh, I think due to the limitation of the time, uh, I think it's enough for Q&A session. Uh, we would say a thank you for Dr. Johan, uh, who gave us a valuable and wonderful insight about a capital budgeting. Okay. And sure, there are limitations during this session, and I am honestly request for apologize if there is any inconvenience situation. Uh, so uh, I give the session back to MC Joshua. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, well, everyone, some last of us that our event today has come to an end. For any quick question, we couldn't answer due to time limitation. Please do not. Uh, hesitate to let us know by email and business at ITS Ashiadi. Uh, we would like to express, express our great appreciation for our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Johan, who already shared his knowledge to us. We also would like to thank to all participants today. We do hope everyone enjoy an insightful and productive meeting. And we would like to invite you uh, in the virtual group photo. So please kindly share your best smile by turning on video. Once more, uh, we would like to invite you uh, in the virtual group photo. So please kindly share your best map by turning on video. Okay, I will start counting. Three, two, one. Once more. Three, two, one. Thank you. On behalf of the organizing committee at the MC, we would like to apologize for any inconveniences that uh, might be happened during this event. Thank you. Have a good day and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Johan. Thank you, Dr. Johan. <laughs> okay. Terima kasih. Yes, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Hope, hopefully, they had the, they understood was the connection good to hear everything. Yeah, I think they can understand. Oh, we will discuss about your topic in the next meeting, actually, <laughs> about capital budgeting in financial. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, would, it would be interesting to see or to hear some feedback from uh, the students. Uh, it, is, uh, it was um, a little bit difficult to get some feedback from them, but, uh, but OK. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, they, uh, they captured uh, some things. That's the most important thing. Huh? Uh, Okay. Yes, and hopefully you can come back again to <laughs> Surabaya. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, would, I would like to, but uh, yes, uh, COVID is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, is a problem um, uh, at the moment. So, uh, but hopefully we'll, um, each crisis has, uh, offers also opportunities to do, uh, to do better or to, to do uh, things otherwise like this, for example. It's, it's good, I huh, know, we do it like this. Yeah. Um, Yes, hope to see you again uh, in life. Uh, and many greetings to uh, Berto, Imam, uh, uh, the people I, uh, I've met, uh, uh, Putti. Uh, so um, yes, it was a very good uh, and nice time I uh, had there uh, with you together. Uh, you. Yeah, we hope you can, um, you can come once to, to Belgium. Eh? I'd love to. Say <laughs> <laughs> Amir. <laughs> but it's uh, you ask it as at Imam. It's uh, in November. I think he came in November. Uh, yes. But it's a cold. Uh, it was at that time he came twice. It was uh, quite cold at that time. <laughs> yes, yes. We visited Brussels, and he was not uh, dressed. Uh, uh, he bought some. Uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. It was it was Pak Imam with Pak Nugroho, I guess last year. It was last year, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Good. I wish you all the best with everything you do. Take care, everyone, uh, for yourself and your family. Be mm -hmm. safe, and uh, hopefully, uh, wish each other uh, again, uh, okay. or on video, or uh, in another way. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, bye-bye.